Today we're going to be talking about Warhammer 40k dice probability. We'll start with the basics, then go over how rerolls and modifiers affect the probability of our dice rolls. We'll talk about the importance of stacking buffs, as well as why we can't always expect expected results. First, we have to clear up some misconceptions about dice in general. Uh, every single dice roll is independent of the last one. Just because you've rolled a bunch of ones, it doesn't mean you're due for more sixes. Additionally, there's equal probability for every side of the dice roll. That gives it about 17% chance, or 1 in 6, to get any specific roll on the d6. Another thing we can do is we can take 1 minus the probability of something occurring to know the probability of that thing not occurring. So really, basically, if uh, there's a 2 thirds chance that someone hits, there's a 1 third chance they'll miss. Before we get into some of the advanced topics, I just want to show kind of how I visualize dice rolls. So on the left here, we've got one through six, the options you can roll on a six sided dice. And we're gonna be imagining that we have someone who hits on a four up. So four, five, and six hits in green for hitting, red for missing. Then we'll go to wounding. Um, same thing, wounding on a four, five, and six, missing on a one, two, and three. What I've tried to do here is actually change the size so that as we go along, the size is actually equivalent to kind of the probability going from large to small. And then on the right, we have a failed save. Of course, saves uh, the opponent takes, so we want them to roll low. So a one, two, or three, they fail their save. And when we look at this, you can see that our little green bar is much smaller than our red bar of total attacks we started with from hits. And we can do all this math out and see that we're going you know, three out of six chances to hit, three out of six chances to wound, and three out of six chances for our opponent to fail a save, giving us 27 over 216 results, or one out of eight. And that should look pretty similar to the green and red bar you see on the far right. So we're gonna be using this visualization tool to kind of look at different probabilities and how that can change based on modifiers or rerolls. It's important to know that order does not matter when multiplying probabilities. So if I hit on a two plus and wound on a six plus, it's the same result as hitting on a six plus and wounding on a two plus. Uh, order does not matter when we're multiplying any of these probabilities. First thing to know is that rerolling ones will always increase the expected hits by 16.66%. So we're going to be imagining uh, doing 36 attacks with perfect dice. And what I mean by that is that we're going to roll six sixes, six fives, six fours, six threes, twos, and ones. Okay, so we're going to use our same uh, example as before, hitting on a four, five, and six. So we're going to get 18 hits hitting on a four plus. So we're going to re-roll uh, those six ones, and we're going to get three hits from that, and then three more misses. So if we take those 18 hits that we had by hitting on a 4+, plus, and then the 3 hits we got from rerolling our 1s, we'll get 21 hits. When we compare that to the 18 we got without rerolls, we can see that it's a 16.6% increase in hits. As we talked about earlier, the order of multiplying doesn't actually matter, so we can just consider that a flat, roughly 17% increase in damage overall. And you can see here that if I change it to hitting on a 3+, we hit 24 times out of 36, and then we reroll our ones, they get an additional four hits for 28 total, divide that by 24, and we still see the roughly 17% increase in damage. And you can try this out for yourself, but it does not matter what your uh, chance to hit is. If you reroll ones, it always increases it by 16.6% chance. Wounds and hits act exactly the same. You know, the dice don't know if you're rolling <laughs> to the wound or rolling to hit. So if you have something like a lieutenant, uh, Space Marine Lieutenant, we're giving you reroll ones to wound, that's exactly the same as rerolling ones to hit. Uh, I have friends that tell me that this is not true and that rerolling to wound, ones to wound is more effective, uh, but that's totally wrong and I don't know why they think that. Okay, now doing full rerolls affect the expected result based on the stat you have. So we'll start again with our four, five, and six hitting with perfect dice of 36 attacks. We'll get the same hits, 18 hits as before, and then we'll reroll all 18 misses from the ones, twos, and threes we rolled. And from that, we'll get nine hits that are converted from misses to hits. That's 27 total hits out of the 18 we would have gotten without the rerolls, giving us a 50% increase in damage with full rerolls with a 
four plus to hit. Now if we change this up and now we're hitting on a five plus, you'll see that we hit with only 12 of our 36 attacks and we would convert 20 of those 24 misses, eight of those into hits. That gives us 20 over 12 or a 66% increase in damage when we have full rerolls with a five plus to hit. Now I've done a kind of a chart out for everyone here and you can see that essentially as our to hit or to wound modifier is worse, rerolls are more impactful. So if you have a two plus to hit or wound, a full rerolls only gives you a 16% increase to damage, where if you are hitting or wounding on a six, a, a full rerolls will give you 83% increase in damage. Also, modifiers are more effective on worse stats. So starting from our example, now we're wounding on just a five and a six. So with our 36 attacks, we'll get 12 wounds. But if we imagine uh, instead we're wounding on four, five, and six, maybe from a strat or a blood angel's passive, we go up to 18 wounds. And I'll put this in a chart as well. You'll see that um, essentially people who are hitting or wounding on a six, the modifier, just a plus one will give them a 100% increase in damage. And you'll see that decreasing as you go from five, four, three, and two to wound. Additionally, uh, ones always fail in Warhammer, whether that's a, to hit or to wound. So if you're already uh, hitting on two plus and wounding on two plus, adding more modifiers to hit or wound doesn't actually help. And you can kind of think of this pretty simply, like if I'm a you know pretty crappy conscript and I'm hitting on a five plus, if I'm shooting through cover, getting a minus one. I'm at six plus, and so now I'm converting. Instead of having two possibilities out of six, I only have one out of six, so my uh, damage is effectively halved. And buffs are multiplicative, so sometimes you would think, hey, if I've got 50% more hits and 50% more wounds, that would be 100% more damage, right? Uh, and it's actually not. It's actually 125% more damage, and that's because you multiply them, the hits uh, to wound and the armor saves, right? So 1.5 times 1.5 is 2.25, not just 2. And we can actually look this out on math. So on the left here, this is hitting on 4s, wounding on 4s with 36 dice. You can see the expected result is 9, and that should make sense because it's 1 half times 1 half, or 1 fourth of our initial attacks. But if we throw reroll misses and reroll all failed wounds, you'll see that those same 36 attacks actually become 20.25 wounds. And then uh, 20.25 divided by 9 is going to be 2.25. So buffs are multiplicative, and that means it's more important to stack them together. So we'll look at a case study of this. Uh, it's 10 Scarab Occult Terminators. They've got 3 plus BS, Ballistic Skill. They have Rapid Fire 2 weapons at 4 Strength and minus 2 AP. And we're going to be comparing them to a Primaris Marine equivalent here. So that is Toughness 4 and 3 plus Armor Save. So you can see we're starting with 40 attacks because Rapid Fire 2 and they're Terminators, so they always get to shoot uh, 4. So we start with 40 attacks, and by the end of it, we do about 9 points of damage. And that's not a whole lot, you know, maybe killing 200 points of Space Marines on this multi-hundred, you know, 400-point unit. So now let's imagine instead we just pile a bunch of buffs on them. So we're going to give them Prescience, which gives them plus one to hit. We're going to have them near, be near uh, something like Armon, giving them rerolling ones to hit. We'll be using a Strat Infernal Fusillade, which allows them to fire twice. And we'll be using Veterans of the Long War, which is plus one to wound. So now we've stacked roughly, or we've stacked four different buffs on them, and now we can compare how much damage they're able to do now. So with all their attacks, the expected damage is 35 damage. So that means by stacking these buffs together, we've made the Scarab Occult Terminators roughly four times as deadly at shooting. Uh, now, of course, that cost a couple CP, had a uh, Psychic Ritual go off, and also had an arm on near them. But the fact is this you know, unit of Terminators is incredibly powerful when you stack all these buffs on top of it. And this buffs being multiplicative uh, also work for defense. 
So imagine an auto cannon versus a Primaris Marine equivalent. So 3 plus BS, 6 strength, minus 2 AP, damage 2 shots. This is made for killing Marines, and it only takes about 4 shots to kill a regular Marine. However, if we put a forest in between them, put the Marine in a crater, um, have him activate transhuman physiology, and put an apothecary near him, we can see that it takes 11 shots. So nearly three times as hard with a uh, weapon specifically designed, you know, perfect for killing Marines, and it takes, you know, uh, three times as many shots if you put all these things, um, you know, in the Marines' favor. So it's incredibly important that we multiply these buffs together, whether they're defensive or offensive. And you really can't count on expected results. So on the left here, we're looking at 40 uh, Marine Bolter shots versus you know similar Primaris Marines as themselves. So on these charts, models killed is on the x-axis and then probability is on the y-axis. So you can see that the probability to kill at least five models is 56% and the probability to kill at least four models is 82%. But if you're trying to kill, you know, a minimum sized unit of Primaris Marines off an objective, you don't want to be relying on a 56% chance. In fact, if you just do 10 more shots or 50 bolter shots, which, you know, I will say is still a lot of shots, it actually brings your percentage chance of five killed up to about 83%. And now when you're doing, you know, kind of uh, quick math and looking at the battlefield, you really don't want to be banking on 50% rolls. You want to be doing things between, you know, 70 and 80%. Um, even as you chain those together, you're going to start running into some issues, however. So we roll a lot of dice. Unexpected results will occur. That's just what happens when you start rolling hundreds of dice every game you play. Sometimes you're going to pick up a hand of five dice and you're not going to roll a single three or above. And that's honestly probably likely with the amount of dice we roll. Chaining high probability events can still be a low probability play. So for example, let's say I said, okay, I have an 80% chance to do this. And then I'll do an 80% chance to do this and this and this, and that will win me the game. Well, if you put those all together and you start chaining, requiring all those probabilities to happen, you actually get about only a 40% chance of success. Bad rolls happen, and you have to look for ways that you could minimize unnecessary risk. The best players don't complain about their dice. You know, I was listening to a podcast where Nick Nanavati was talking about one of the games he lost at a recent GT, and he was saying how essentially... Um, Admech player was very good, used an explode stratagem, got incredibly high rolls on mortal wound output, and he lost because of that. But he didn't lose because the dice were, you know, bad and they went out of his favor. He lost because he didn't play around it. And I think that's the key here is, you know, you can't always, you can't really choose, um, you know, to be lucky or not lucky, but you can choose to play around unnecessary risk. So that was a discussion on Warhammer 40k dice probability. Uh, I would really appreciate any likes or subscribes. That encourages me to keep doing this. Uh, and if you have any suggestions of things you want to look at, I know there's so much more math we could look into, whether it's secondaries or charges, uh, put a comment uh, below and I'm sure I'll get to it.